hillside overlooking the Pikes Peak region of Colorado Springs stands a memorial to a man who's not even buried there, the Will Rogers Shrine of the Sun, named for humorist Will Rogers. The shrine was fashioned from native granite, quarried from a single boulder without wood or nails. It was built by Mr. Penrose, and he built it largely as a monument to himself, as a resting place. And his friends gave him so much grief that he changed the name and named it after his good friend Will Rogers, who died in a plane crash. The monument towers over the Broadmoor, the dream child of Spencer and Julie Penrose. And Mr. Penrose's vision was to build the grandest hotel in America. The Broadmoor was built in 1918 as a world-class resort to rival those in Europe. As Colorado's only five-star hotel, it's a dazzling spectacle of classic architecture, elegant furnishings, and uncompromising service. European and Italian artisans handcrafted ornate moldings and painted lavish scenes on site. The Broadmoor always, when you enter this place, it feels separate from the city. It has such its own sense of place. You always feel like you're going to a destination. And that's what gives us the charm and the character that I think sets us apart from most of the hotels in the world, really. There's really nothing like this. It's one of a kind. There's just one. We're not a chain. Uh, we're not a brand. We're fiercely independent. And I love hotels with history. They all have a, a great story to tell. This one's particularly noteworthy because it's so colorful. Spencer Penrose was larger than life. So he built this grand hotel in the middle of nowhere. They built it in 11 months. Now try and do something like that today. Replacement value of this hotel the way it is today to acquire the land. You have 40 buildings spread through 3,000 acres, three golf courses. To get this kind of land in this kind of setting, $700 million to replace what you see here today. Mr. Penrose built it for a grand total of $3 million. Original budget was $1.8 million, but he went over. He came out of Cripple Creek in the late 1800s with about a half million dollars, gambled it all on this newfangled method of mining low-grade copper ore and converting that into copper. So this hotel was built on copper and gold. Italian Renaissance in style, the Broadmoor is a showcase for impeccable taste, from its sumptuous surroundings to its finely hand-carved architectural details. There's some very classic architecture here, but he also blended that with a lot of whimsical stuff, too. If you look at the uh, paintings, the cherubs, they'll have Indian headdresses and carry tomahawks. Where else are you going to find that, you know, and that was... Uh back to our days of our founders, Spencer Penrose and Julie, loving not only art itself and elegance, but also loving the West and having this strange incorporation of uh, mythology and Italian Renaissance and artwork and Western flair. People worked very hard to get to the Broadmoor when it first opened took trains, took their old uh, vehicles across country and loaded up truly enough clothes to last them for two and three months. Being here was a complete destination. It was an experience. They planned for it. Now, in comparison, a long visit would be two weeks. The more normal visit is two to three days. The Broadmoor recently underwent a historic restoration and renovation. It's a living hotel. It's had renovations from practically the day that it was first constructed. We looked at the archives of both drawings and photographs to see the evolution of the building over the years. Everywhere you walk, you see some touch of the building by some former craftsman. Those are the areas where you most want to preserve. It really contributes to the soul of the hotel and things that you're not going to find any other place that you go in the world. Spencer and Julie Penrose promoted the city they loved through their philanthropy and goodwill. They built the Pikes Peak Highway, modernized the Cog Railway, and founded Cheyenne Mountain Zoo. After the death of her husband, Julie Penrose took up residence in their hotel. 
Penrose Suite is unique. It's very atypical to hotel suites. It's still furnished with many of her original pieces, figurines, antiques, things they collected in their world travels, chandeliers. It looks like something you'd see on the Upper East Side of Manhattan in a style of yesteryear. You have a hotel that has character in its architecture, one of the most magnificent settings you could ever envision for a resort. So Mr. Penrose's vision lives on even past his death and uh, for all of us generations from then to enjoy it today. Mm -hmm.